Do you remember that young man that went fishing on Lake Genesaret, also known as the Sea of Galilee? And he caught a couple of fish. And they had a big picnic. You remember that kid? Good morning, guys and girls. Good morning on a spectacular morning at the Eagle. I'm talking a spectacular morning. Look out there. Dead calm, dead calm. Absolutely gorgeous. Man, oh man, oh man. Fall is, is, is coming. It's coming. It's coming. We can feel it in the air, particularly at night. You can feel it in the air. We're still having a lot of hot days and a little moisture coming in a little bit more often. Not nearly enough yet. Not nearly enough yet. September 9. We're looking at John 6, 9, reading out of Catch a Better Life book. If you don't have a copy of Catch a Better Life book, you can get one at Bass Pro Shop. You can get one at Cabela's. You can get one at Hobby Lobby. Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, JimmyHouston.com. Uh, if you order from us, you want that book autographed and personalized, uh, let us know. We'll be happy to do that for you. John 6, 9. There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? There's a boy here that's got a couple of fish. He's got five little loaves of bread. You know, I suspect that his mama fixed that little, those little loaves of bread for him for, uh, for lunch, uh, just in case he didn't catch any fish. But he had two fish. He had two small fish, not whoppers, two small fish and five barley loaves. But what are they among so many? Since the advent of the Garmin LiveScope, fishermen have begun targeting larger fish. It turns out that larger bass usually are alone. Uh, sometimes there's a couple of them together, but most of the time the big bass are, are by themselves. They don't have too many buddies. They're quite often suspended above brush or logs. Um, you know, I've seen, I've caught nine pounders uh, over eight or nine, ten foot of water, and the fish be four or five foot deep, suspended over the top of that brush pile or logs. They're mostly above schools of shad in the colder months and not below them. We think of bass being down under schools of shad, rising up to get them. Most of the time when we find those larger bass in the wintertime, December, January, February, the bass are above the schools of shad and not below them. So they actually just go down and crash through them and eat whatever they want to eat. They spook easily. Uh, we scare a lot of the fish. We see a lot that we don't even get a good cast at. And they often run from our baits. <laughs> that is so amazing. It's so amazing. They often run from our baits. Uh, particularly, uh, if you see a fish, a lot of times it's laying by a tree, maybe I don't know, eight or 10 foot of water, and a fish might be four or five foot down laying beside that tree. And a lot of times we'll pitch a jig over there toward that fish and let it go roll right down on top of that fish like we've done a million times. Somebody like me, a bazillion times in our lifetime. And the fish just runs like we shoot him with a 22 or something i mean it's a it's amazing the things that we've learned using that live scope today's scripture today's scripture is about jesus performing the miracle of feeding over five thousand men with one little boy's lunch five thousand men by, by the way there was women and children there too uh they didn't much count women and children back in those days so the, the count on the stories five thousand men plus women and kids. So there could easily have been 10, 12,000 people there. 10 or 12,000. 10 or 12,000. It's interesting that the fish weren't big, like the ones we scope out nowadays with the Garmin. They were more, most likely tilapia. I have fished there in Lake Genesaret, the Sea of Galilee, and uh, in, uh, uh, in around Jerusalem. And uh, I have uh, I fished there, and that's the main fish there, tilapia. Most likely the fish, when they mention fish in the Bible, except for the big fish that swallowed Jonah. Most likely when mentioned fish around the Sea of uh, Galilee there in Israel, they are talking about tilapia. That's the most dominant fish. So of course, catfish don't have any scales, and so they are taboo to the, to the Israelites, to the Jewish people. So most likely tilapia, good-eating fish, and, uh, but most likely these fish were around a pound or so. Tilapia will get up to, you know, three or four pounds, five pounds, but uh, that's a really, really big one. But those fish were probably around a, a, a pound or so. <clears throat> it said here two small fish, so they were probably small. Also, it appears that the boy gave Jesus the fish without any argument. When Jesus asked for the fish, the boy just gave them to him. He gave them to him. This could be, this is important, this could be the childlike faith that it takes to come to Jesus. 
I know when I get to heaven, I want to visit with that little boy. I sure want to visit with that little boy. But because when I fished the Sea of Galilee, I didn't get to catch two small fish. I didn't catch anything. I had one fish hooked and it came off. This could be the childlike face that it takes to come to Jesus. I think that he caught them fish by himself. I mean, I'm, that's just what I'm believing. I don't know. You know, that might have been some fish that, uh, you know, they had at the house or something. His mama packed with those five barley loaves of bread. But I believe this little boy caught those fish himself. This young fisherman, he didn't just share his catch with Jesus. They didn't sit down and have a little picnic there, just him and Jesus. He gave it all. He gave his entire catch. Plus, he gave those little five uh, loaves of barley bread. He gave his whole catch plus the bread. Here's the deal. Give Jesus your all today. Give him all of yourself, all of everything you have. Put it in Jesus' hand and get ready for a miracle. You just might feed thousands. That's right. You just might feed thousands. Here's our tip for today. It's a good one. This time of the year especially, search out muddy or murky water that is clearing. We're beginning to have some late summer, fall rains, and it's muddying up a lot of water in some places a lot. You know, I mean, it looked like Roaring River or something over there down in, in Dallas here a while back. I mean, the water is just gushing into Lake Fork and a lot of those rivers down there. And that water was muddy that was coming in. Look for that water that is clearing. It's, it's muddy and it's getting clear. That's where you're going to find a lot of fish right now. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one. And remember, I sure do love you.